For my AP Computer Science project, I made a Clash Royale machine learning bot that uses vision, my name is Goku. card detection, and a deep learning framework that eventually learns how to win with this deck. <laughs> First, I'm going to explain what Clash Royale is, then I'm going to explain day by day what I did to make this bot, then I'm going to show a game that the bot played, and I'm going to end it off with some final comments. Clash Royale, a popular game averaging a lot more than millions of active players a month, is a real-time strategy multiplayer battle arena tower defense card game that puts players in games featuring 1v1s or 2v2s with the objective of essentially destroying more towers than the opponent. Destroying the King Tower is described as a 3 crown victory. Matches last 3 minutes and if both teams have an equal amount of crowns or none at all, matches go into a 2 minute overtime where whoever destroys any opposing tower first wins. If no towers are destroyed during overtime, there is a tiebreaker where the team with the higher minimum tower health wins. If health is somehow equal or both king towers is destroyed at the same time, a draw occurs. Another important concept about the game is elixir. Elixir is needed to deploy units. Each player starts with 5 elixir and can hold a maximum of 10. At the first 2 minutes of the match, players gain 1 elixir per 2.8 seconds. After 2 minutes, the game enters double elixir and players gain 2 elixir per 2.8 seconds. Your unit are represented by the cards at the bottom of the screen. The number at the bottom of the card represents how many elixir it takes to deploy the unit. You can tap and drag it to deploy where you want it in the arena. You cannot deploy units to areas shaded in red. When one of the enemy's princess towers is destroyed, the area to deploy your unit increases. The cards you can use can be set by you, and the 8 cards you choose would make something called a deck. Your player's rating can be determined by trophies. When you win matches, you gain trophies. When you lose matches, you lose trophies. Depending on your trophies, when you are in matchmaking, the game will pair you up with someone who has a similar number of trophies as you to make the game fair. Clash Royale is considered pay to win because the game's progression system heavily favors players who spend money and it gives them significant advantages over free to play players. So what if there was a way to grind a ton of time on it, but not have to do it all myself? That's why I made a Clash Instead of force feeding you a fat chunk of what I did, I'm just gonna break it down by days of what I did each day. So for- I looked at what other YouTubers did for inspiration on how I would make the bot. I looked at Kian Bros, Omberu, Omberus, I, I'm not even gonna try, and the Pi Clash Bot Fight Vision Demo. Those videos gave me a ton of ideas. Like the Pi Clash Bot used a vision model to detect the allies and enemies on the field, as well as the cards it had in its hand. However, unlike using a ton of if statements and spamming one card in an area, I want my robot to have its own ideas. I installed Boostax as my Android emulator with Clash Royale installed. Very easy. I also started to use Roboflow for my vision model, annotating towers, allies, and enemies. There was already a vision model for card detection, so that saved me plenty of time. I kept annotating and eventually got a decentish model to detect allies, enemies, and current towers. I made some simple methods that take a screenshot of a certain region and save it into a desired folder and play a certain card in the desired area. I spent two whole days trying to figure out how to count elixir and ended up with just pixel counting, not the stupid bad image detection from Pi Auto GOI. Days 13 and 14 are days I will never look back on. To explain what I did, first, let's go over some terms. An agent is the decision maker that performs action. The environment is the world or system that the agent operates in. For Clash Royale, it's the map. The state is the current situation or condition the agent is currently in. For example, it can be how many elixir we currently have, all the enemies on the field and their positions, etc. The action is a possible move or decision the agent can take. For the bot, it's what card to play and where to play it. The reward is the feedback or result from the environment based on the agent's actions. First, I implemented an agent that uses PyTorch to learn by playing games. I created an Epsilon Greedy algorithm for training to balance exploration, exploitation, and decision making. Exploitation is where the bot chooses the best action it knows based on past games, but exploration is where it tries random new actions to discover better strategies. An Epsilon Greedy algorithm is where, in the beginning, the Epsilon or the chance that the bot makes a random action starts decently high. 
and as it trains, the epsilon will decrease until it's some value like 0 0.01, which basically means that 1% of the time it's making random actions and then the other 99% it's its own decisions. After I implemented the agent, I implemented important methods like get state, which gets the current state by counting elixir and seeing who is on the map. Originally, I just put the average of the allies and enemies position, but in upcoming days, I changed that. I also added a reward function, and right now, it's very simple. If enemies are advancing toward our side, rewards are more negative. If you win, plus 100, and if you lose, minus 100. We're gonna expand on this later on. Remember the vision model I trained? Well, I successfully implemented it, and then I eventually found out that it costs a ton of credit. So then I used Docker to self-host it. And everything else was automation that wasn't related to playing the actual game like finding the start button and clicking it, seeing if the game ended and determining if we won or lost by the Y coordinate of the winner title, etc. I added card detection, which takes a screenshot of the card bar, splits it up into four individual card images, and determines what cards are in the current hand. With that information, make a decision of what card to play and where to play it. I'm also thinking that it's probably going to be trash at spell cards, so the logic to maybe fix it goes like this. If a spell card was played and there are no enemies around it, penalize the bot. Another thing I added were more stuff on rewards, like if a princess tower was destroyed, give the bot some candy and a high five. I also made it so that it saved the training model in episode on after 10 games ish other stuff was just more automation like after detecting the winner title click the ok button another thing is instead of taking the average of allies and enemies position i took in the actual positions of them with everything about the bot set in place so what do you think i wish i lived there really no and with the presentation about the bot for my ap computer science final project due tomorrow i started training it After hundreds and hundreds of games, hundreds and hundreds of opportunities for it to learn from its mistakes, here's the final game it played, which I showed my class.
here's some final thoughts. Firstly, considering that it took a while for the bot to learn what's right and what's wrong, I couldn't get that much up on trophies. Another factor for that was that the automation kind of sucked, and I didn't implement any method for the bot to handle if a chest needed to be unlocked. A workaround for this was just to click the play again button instead of the OK button, which showed up after a couple of games. Now, remember when I said I thought the bot was going to be really bad at spell cards? It was horribly bad. I eventually just gave it a deck with no spell cards for it to use because training it to use spell cards correctly was going to take a long time. Also, I didn't really know any other way to detect if the game ended, so the bot just kept playing until it saw the winner title, and I mean even in the menu, it kept playing. I didn't have time to implement better visioning where it could see the princess tower slash king tower health, detect characters on the screen, and determine who they are by name instead of just ally and enemy. It was basically the bot playing without any form of information about the tower health, also where allies and enemies are, but it won't tell you their names, and what cards you have. If it maybe had more specificity, it would have been better. Due to time constraints of when the project was due, I didn't really have time. Despite all the downsides, I'm still very happy about how it actually played decently. A final takeaway from this video can be, if you ever saw a pay-to-win game that bullies you, just bully yourself more to beat the game.